Okay, my name is Nana Amo Kentinkla, uh, also known as Reverend J. Carl Kennedy. And I represent KMB Products, uh, which is also KMB Painters and KMB Investment Club Tourism. And also I represent Unimind. KMB stands for Kennedy and Barry. And instead of using the, the uh, word and, we use in. So it's capital K, small case N, and then capital B. Now the way the, way the company came about in 2013, uh, myself and a friend of mine, Detective Kenneth Barry of the East St. Louis, Illinois uh, Police Department, this is in the USA, uh, we formed KNB Products. And uh, what happened was uh, we formed it in August of 2013. In November of 2013, I came to Ghana to expand KNB products and start a branch here in Ghana. Unfortunately, a uh, week after I got to Ghana, uh, Detective Barry passed away. And um, so I continued with the KNB brand over here in Ghana. So now we have KNB. Uh, in Ghana, and uh, but KMB actually started in the U.S. in East St. Louis, Illinois, USA. KMB is a, a company, and we have uh, several different uh, uh, divisions in that company. We have uh, KMB painters. Uh, we paint. Uh, uh, have a team of painters, and we paint. What we do is uh, I train the painters by picking a primary school in a specific town, and we paint the school. And what this does, this makes the school look as pretty as the children's uniform. We, uh, try, to, we try to pick up the primary school, that's where the youngest children go to school. And it's very important that their first experience with school be a positive experience. So what, we're, what we do is uh, we pick a school and we paint it to make the school look as beautiful as the children. And we also have products that we sell, uh, KNB, uh, black soap, shea butter, a floor cleaner. Uh, we have a product that grows hair. We have a product called Sun Shield that protects the sun, the uh, skin against the sun. And also it, uh, it helps to uh, treat uh, skin diseases like eczema and other rashes that people get on the skin. And uh, we have a KNB Investment Tourism Club. Now, what this is about, the KMB Investment Tourism Club, uh, I am a tour guide. And when people come here from the US, uh, what, what I try to do is they go on the regular tourism circuit. The uh, people want to want to um, visit Cape Coast Castle. They want to visit Elmina Castle and uh, visit the dungeons and talk about the past. Now, that's all well and good. It's good to remember the past, but what we try to do with KNB Investment Tourism Club, while the people are here, we try to connect them with entrepreneurs in Ghana. And what we ask for them to do is when they leave and go back to the U.S. to leave 500 U.S. dollars and to the entrepreneur. And the entrepreneur will take that 500 in U.S. dollars and make it grow. In three months time, they will get a 10% return on their investment. So in other words, if they leave 500 US with an entrepreneur here in Ghana that they will meet uh, while they're on their tour, then in three months time, the entrepreneur will give them back 550 US. So $50 is 10% of 500 dollars. And uh, the KNB Investment Tourism Club guarantees a minimum of 10% return on the investment. Now, the fact of the matter is, if they uh, connect with an investor who is selling a product that is moving, such as water, food, uh, fabrics, and other products that people are buying, then they will make 10% in one month. But we give them a three month time period. And it is in the best interest of the entrepreneur to give the investor more than 10% profit in three months time. But uh, the point is, the investment club guarantees a 10% profit. So 
it's a situation where the person from the U.S., when it goes back, they will have their money working for them here in Ghana. And in three months' time, they are guaranteed at least 10% profit. As I said, my original partner for KNB passed away after I was in Ghana for a week. Now, I came to Ghana to set up a branch in Ghana of KNB products, and Odisha is the person who I partnered with. So Odisha is my partner for KNB in Ghana. Unimine is a company that I started uh, maybe 10 years ago, I believe, uh, along with my uh, partner, um, Mavis. Her name is Mavis. And what we do is, uh, right now we're working on a project called Handicapped. This is a series where we're going out and interviewing handicapped business people who have marketable skills and who have products that are as quality products as anyone else's. And we try to give their products exposure and we're trying to show people that just because people have a handicap, uh, people call it a disability, I prefer to call it a different ability. A person may not be able to see, but that doesn't mean they don't have a vision. Uh, it's not that they have a disability to do something, it is that they have a different ability to do something. And a lot of times when uh, you're, you're lacking one ability, God will give you an extra ability to do the same thing that someone with uh, all of their five senses would able, be able to do. So uh, the Unimine uh, project that we're working on now is a project that we're um, uh, focusing on handicapped people. And what we want to do is get people to support handicapped business people and give them a chance to make a decent living. Uh, because a lot of times uh, handicapped people can produce a product or deliver a service that is the same equally or even better than someone who has all of their five senses. So that's what this pro, uh, Unimine project is about. And well, we're collaborating with KNB because there's things that KNB are involved in that also have to do with handicapped people. For example, my uh, partner, as I mentioned, Odisha uh, Obin Ajir, uh, we call him Collins. He recently um, uh, made it, uh, he made it possible for handicapped people to work at the toll booths here in Ghana. And now, as you know, they recently closed the toll booths in Ghana. But for almost a year, he had handicapped people working at the toll booths, collecting the uh, tolls as the people came on the roads. I don't know why they closed the toll booths, but for some reason they closed the toll booths and now the people are out of work. So. What we're trying to do is help those handicapped people get resituated. And Unimine is on a project to highlight other handicapped people who have businesses. And we're trying to get as much financial support as handicapped people for handicapped people as we can, quite frankly. And we think that by uh, doing these episodes of Handicap, the program is called Handicap, then we will give a lot of exposure to handicapped people in Ghana who have businesses and uh, try to get people to patronize their businesses. And that gives the handicapped person uh, self-esteem where they're able to make an honest dollar for an honest day's work. So this series I'm very excited about. Uh, we're gonna have it on YouTube. Uh, we're gonna advertise it on social media. And we will probably even uh, purchase some airtime on the TV program here in Ghana and uh, show a different episode every week. It's going to be called Handicapped, and we're very excited about this. And this is uh, uh, something that Unimine is involved in. Uh, Unimine is a, a business that uh, I'm involved in, and also KNB Products is a business that I'm involved in. In 1991, I wrote a book, The African POW in America. And uh, what this book is dealing with is the fact that my ancestors were um, taken from the west coast of Africa as prisoners of war. Uh, that's what POW means, prisoners of war. And uh, we are in fact still prisoners of war until we get reparations. Uh, our ancestors, my ancestors were taken to the US and worked to death, basically worked to death to build the wealth of the United States of America. 
And uh, uh, as a matter of economic justice, the United States of America owes the descendants of African prisoners of war reparations for the, uh, the, the many years of free labor and the uh, crimes against humanity that were committed against my ancestors. And I detail this in my book, The African POW in America. Uh, also, uh, on the subject of African POW in America, I am in the process now of connecting uh, 100 uh, African POW men with 100 women in Africa because African women are basically a lifeline to the African POW men in America. Black American men live in a culture of death as I talk about in my book, The African POW in America. And they need to get out of that cycle culture of death where they don't even expect to live to reach 30. And what we're trying to do is uh, connect 100 of them with 100 African women so that they can at least come and visit. They need to leave the U.S. if nothing more than for two weeks or maybe even a month. And they need to get out of a culture of death and get introduced into a culture of life. It's just like being in a battle zone. You know, uh, even when you're in a battle zone, it helps for you to have R&R, &R. it's called rest and recreation. And that's getting off of the battlefield and going somewhere where you can relax and calm your nerves down so that you can go back and continue the battle. And that's the situation that uh, the, uh, uh, the African POW in America, or the African prisoners of war in America are in that situation where uh, most of our young men spend their life in prisons or they die an early death and that cycle has to be changed. The fact of the matter is, um, ever since 1865 in the United States, uh, black men have been uh, victims of genocide. And genocide is the systematic uh, elimination, the systematic manipulation, and the systematic incarceration. And that is a cycle that black American men have been going through since 1865. This is 2023 almost. So that's a long time for somebody to be trying to wipe you out. And that is the situation that we live in. So basically my message is that we need to connect. We call it building a bridge across the middle passage. You can't change the past, but you can affect the present and you can shape the future but you have to change the direction that you're going on. And uh, right now, black American men are going on a uh, suicidal direction. And the only thing that can really bring them out of this is African women, because African women are like a lifeline. If someone is stuck in the bottom of a well, only someone who is outside of the well can throw them a lifeline. And that is the position that African women are in. God made African women as beautiful as they are so that they would have the black power, the black magnetic power to pull black American men out of the uh, prison slash slavery system genocide line that they presently live in. To the general public, my message is that we could use as much support from you as we can. Uh, but specifically to uh, the people who are, are the descendants of African prisoners of war in the U.S., my message is that we call ourselves African-Americans, but what have you done for Africa lately? And if you call yourself an African-American, then you should be interested in supporting Mother Africa. Uh, there's really no excuse for you not to support Mother Africa. And I make a special appeal to you because that's where I'm from. I'm from the U.S. and uh, I am a descendant of African prisoners of war and I am an African prisoner of war. But um, we need to do more and we need to be closer. We need to have contacts and investments outside of the U.S. and inside of Africa, since we call ourselves African Americans. If Africans leave the continent and go to the U.S., they go there so that they can make money and send it back to Africa to support their family or other interests in Africa. Uh, there's really no difference from us. We have been working in the U.S for hundreds of years. And for the last uh, maybe 150 so years, we've been getting paid for our work. So we have money. We throw away more money in a week than most Africans live off of in a month.
So there's no reason financially why we cannot be more supportive of Mother Africa. And I encourage the uh, descendants of African prisoners of war specifically to do more for Africa than, uh, than we have been doing as far as the development of Mother Africa.